planet-wide shackle system with water wick dividers. This thing. How wet can this thing really get? Maybe we should find out. Hey team, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I got a Plano Wedge tackle box. Looks like there's a lot of great features, one of which I'm very curious about is the water wick. Comes with these little dividers. They're water wick dividers. It says, removes moisture, keeping tackle dry. But what does that really mean? How much moisture does it remove? How wet do you think it can get? Plano's website doesn't really tell you anything about it. When you open these things up, there's a little packet inside. Looks like a, just your regular silica desiccant. But it says, do not microwave and do not eat. So don't eat this. It's for your tackle. It's supposed to keep it dry. But how much moisture does it really absorb? So I got two here today. Two packets from two separate tackle boxes. And we're going to measure them using some science. Come along. First things first. If we're going to test how much these things absorb, we're going to have to dry them out. Says here, written right on the pack, 250 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour, written right on the package. Thanks, Plano. That's actually super helpful. Oh, can't see it there. There you go. Okay, into the oven. All right, that's time. Time to take these bad boys out of the oven. Now I'm going to transfer them to a glass bowl. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the ambient moisture in the air to get sucked up by the packets. Here in Canada, it's pretty dry, so it shouldn't be a problem, but just in case, to be sure, I'm going to put them in this glass bowl, seal up the lid, let them cool for about an hour. Okay, and we're back. These two packets have rested for more than an hour, so it's time to open them up. And we'll weigh them dry. Well, we better put a quick little mark on one of them so we know which one is which. And now, make sure our scale is zeroed. And we'll weigh them. 1.23 so See that 1.23 Okay, we'll take it off make sure our scale is zeroed fun Measure packet number two One point two zero. Hopefully, you can see that one. There you go. One point two zero. Okay, put that one back. Now that both are weighed dry, we're gonna add some water in a little cup. Just a bit of water, tap water, nothing special. We'll put it in. Hopefully, we'll raise the humidity inside the bowl that the water wick will absorb. Seal it up again. Okay, that's good stuff. We're gonna let those sit for a couple days, make sure they absorb as much water as they can. We'll come back in a couple days and we'll weigh them again. See how much water they've absorbed. Hey guys, it's been a couple days since we put our water wick packets in the bowl with the water. So we're gonna go ahead and do our final measurements, do a little bit of mathing and see if we can figure out how much water they actually absorbed. Okay, we're back at the scale. Open this carefully, so we don't spill anything. As you can see, the relative humidity has been pretty high all this time, so lots of moisture should have been absorbed. So we'll weigh our first packet. We'll take the water out first, just so we don't spill. We'll take the first packet out, the one that's got the mark on it. Turn on our scale. And measure its weight. One point seven six. Back in. 
here because there's a little bit of water left. All right, measure our second packet. Do it again just to be sure. All right, 1.70. It's interesting to note that there's a little bit of water coming out of it. These things are saturated. You can see it right in the back. They picked up lots and lots and lots of water. Which is great, so that's what they're supposed to do. Okay, time to go through the math. Before I start, I apologize all these values are in metric. I'm Canadian, so that's how we do it. Anyway, here we have both packets side by side. The one on the left with the little mark is the first one I measured and the one on the right is the second one I measured. Let's start with their respective dry weights I recorded after the two packets were dried, 1.23 grams and 1.20 grams. Then after a few days soaking up the humidity in the sealed container, the final weights of each packet were 1.76 grams and 1.70 grams respectively. A difference in weight gain of 0.53 grams and 0.50 grams, and I think it's safe to say that each packet was at its maximum ability to absorb water given there was water saturating out onto the scale. Now, although I didn't measure the temperature inside the sealed container, I think it's fair to assume that my house is at somewhere close to 20 degrees Celsius. So I will assume for simplicity that the density of water is equal to one gram per milliliter. A few degrees more or less aren't going to make too much of a difference as the change in density is really negligible at that point. And my scale really just can't measure down to that many decimals. So back to the packets and the final numbers. We can convert the measured weight into volume using the 1 gram per milliliter density value. Thus, the first packet was able to absorb 0.53 milliliters of water, and the second packet was able to absorb 0.50 milliliters of water. Okay, so half a milliliter really isn't a whole lot. If you're a tournament angler and you fish a lot, you're probably going to saturate this out really quick. Changing baits all day, running with your tackle box open, all those things, you're going to absorb water real quick. Also, if you're moving from a cold morning to a warm afternoon, if this saturates out and it's absorbed too much water, it, it's likely going to release humidity into your box, doing the absolute opposite of what you actually want it to do. Something to watch out for. Same if you're tournament angling, you're going from the north down to the south. So let's see, you fish a quick one here in Canada, and then you travel down to southern Florida. Uh, the change in temperature could actually allow water to release out of this water wick. I also kind of noticed that they're kind of small. So I have the 3700 here. I also have a 3600 downstairs and another 3700 that I'm working on. Um, they're all the same size packet. So I think there's bigger ones in the crankbait boxes. But uh, as far as these go, they're all the same. It's just this piece that changes. It's actually the plastic. What's actually in it doesn't actually change size. I'll have a look as I get more and more tackle. Am I going to change out all my tackle boxes to the Plano Edge? Yeah, probably because I have a disease of buying tackle, but uh, I don't know if it's necessary for the weekend warrior or average angler. Also, if you're in a rainy situation uh, and your boxes start absorbing water, you're definitely going to have to dry these out. How often are you going to have to dry these out? That's really going to depend on your conditions, how often you change your baits, uh, a whole bunch of factors. So do it often at the start till you kind of get a handle on it. I know it's one extra thing that you need to worry about, but... Uh, um, it will, it might work against you if you don't. So either take these out of your box or just keep an eye on them until you get a feel for them. Dry them out whenever you need to and you will probably be okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Poppy and Row in the Wild. Really appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Do I think it's going to change the way it dries out my tackle? Probably not for me in my case. I don't tend to get my baits very wet. That doesn't make a stitch of sense. Huh. That's all I got. <laughs> Ugh, minor in the other space. <laughs> Edge. What the hell is this thing? Why are we... Plano Edge Water Wick. If you like what you see, please subscribe.